Okay, look, you all don't actually get it, so we're going to have a conversation and hopefully by the end of the conversation, you will get it. Bailiff, call the next case. Case. Your Honor, next case is the state of such and such versus such as such and such and such. State your name for the record. Here is the very first conversational conundrum. They want you to state your name. So what do you do? Do you object? Do you give a speech? Do you ask a question? You must look at every question asked by the court as a loaded question that it can have more than one meaning. So ask the court, I need to know, since you said there is a record, is this matter in any way being traded on any market whether publicly or privately? The court will balk and will say that you're one of those people and blah 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 and you will simply say, I'm sorry, was the question inappropriate? A simple yes or no would suffice on the record since you said we're on the record and since it appears my interests are directly related and affected by the instant matter. I have a right to the information as requested. So again I will ask, since you said there is a record, is this matter in any way being traded on any market whether publicly or privately, yes or no? She will probably respond, wait let's hear her say it. I'm not sure I don't know the answer to that question. That sounds like crazy talk or some other nonsensical response. At this point, the bailiff look at you rather sternly so as to intimidate, and you will simply say, I'm going to construe your answer as yes, based on the fact that this particular body serves as a corporation with an EIN number and filing comprehensive annual financial reports, and that the clerk's registry evidences the trading of bonds directly associated with the matters of this court on the markets both publicly and privately. So my next question is, where is the paperwork that I may sign so that I may receive my interest payments and dividends respecting the trade? I told you, sir, I don't know about any trades. Thank you. I will accept your answer as a refusal to provide the information as required by law, and I will seek to do a margin call immediately, and I evidence such a request here on this record. Now here comes the threats, and the making it seem like they're completely frustrated, and the threat to do a psychological evaluation. I'm sorry, ministerial clerk, but if what I'm saying has no basis in law and is inapplicable to this particular matter, then it shouldn't bother you because they're just questions that you have by your refusal to answer while having a duty to respond acquiesce to my construing your answers in a way that I have done. Sir, I had done nothing of the sort. I was attempting to blah, 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 blah. Okay, one final question, if I may. I'm accused of violating a statute, am I not? Yes, you're accused of violating blah, 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 blah. Thank you. Where is the enactment clause of the statute? And on what day that the governor sign off on that statute enacting into law under the legislative process? And did you know that any time a judicial officer attempts to enforce the statute, that they cease to sit as a judicial officer? Because principles of law says that judicial officers are incompetent, so before you threaten to have my competency challenge, I will exercise my right to challenge yours, which is permitted under the law, because your competency is a jurisdictional matter and jurisdiction may be challenged at any time. And I choose to do so now since it really does appear that your incompetent even answer basic and simple questions. Okay, the court will take a five minute recess. Objection. Why are you taking a five-minute recess? We haven't even been here 15 minutes. Sir, as I said, we're going to take a five-minute recess. Excuse me, Your Honor, but what all due respect, as I said, works both ways. Why are you taking a five-minute recess when we have only just started this particular proceeding? I have just challenged your competency. Let's finish that conversation before you decide you want to change anything. Start the court is taking a five-minute recess and that's final. This court is adjourned for the next five minutes. So you ignoring my objection? That is correct. While I must advise this court that when it returns, we will note the record and your attempt to obstruct justice. For I'm not attempting to obstruct anything. Good. I see you want to discuss things now so let the record reflects that the store clerk has elected not to adjourn this meeting for five minutes and to talk about her obstruction of justice. Do you see how I did that there? Everything that had been planned to be discussed is no longer part of the plan. 
This is what judicial officers do to people on a regular basis. They get them talking about something that has nothing to do with the matter at hand, and now the conversation is completely different. You must get them with facts. You must hit them with legitimate and logical questions. You do not hit them with you to video suggestions. You must know the law. And that's what you hit them with. Not statutes, not codes, not regulations, not ordinances, but congressional acts, legislative bills enacted into law, and challenge the stupid statute as being unconstitutional as it was misapplied to your person and your interest. Sir, were to reschedule this meeting, I mean hearing for two weeks from today, you are ordered to appear before this court. Objection. Let's involuntary servitude. You cannot force me to appear before this court. How dare you? Further, if you do not appear before this court, a warrant will be issued for your arrest compelling your appearance before this court. Thank you. I move that this matter be dismissed immediately. What you mean dismiss this matter? I'm not dismissing anything. To appear before court means to submit oneself to the court's jurisdiction. Forcing an individual to submit is known as servitude. Not servitude according to slavery times, but servitude according to the Northwest Ordinance and its prohibition against involuntary servitude. You cannot force me or any other person on this planet to appear before this or any other court on this planet you do not have the authority to do so. And because it is not my wish to submit to the court's jurisdiction at any time and nor shall it ever be construed as such. You have just told me on the record that you are commanding me to be subjected to the court's jurisdiction which amounts to servitude and thus by doing so you have violated my right to be at liberty without constraint. Pending your erroneous charges based upon erroneous codes that are not enacted into law under the legislative process. So of course I'd have to move for dismissal of this matter based upon the law that which appears you are not following. And there you have it, a short conversation on how to control the conversation with simple questions and not redundancies. Until the next episode.